Previously in Finero. I want to teach about the faithfulness of God toward the sinner. You can never be so bad to be used by God. You can never be too wicked for God to throw you away. Because God will use anybody. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter your history. God can use and will use anybody. God is faithful. And the literal word for faithful means he still sticks to the word and promise and commitment he has made. If he says, I will use you, he will still use you. He will do his part. He will work through you and make sure that he fulfills what he promised in your life. First Timothy chapter 1 verses 15. Now Paul is talking to Timothy. He's bringing a very fundamental picture, probably deeper than many of us can ever think in those few verses written there. The Bible says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all the long suffering for a pardon to them who should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting now and to the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god be honor and glory forever and ever somebody say amen paul is saying if you want to understand the pattern of long suffering with god look at the things that god had to stand up with me as soul into paul to bring salvation to my house he says as a chief sinner why? Because not only was he a sinner, but the Bible says he even persecuted the church of Jesus Christ and wasted it. So he's saying, if you're talking of sinning, I, Paul, sinned. But he says, I'm a pattern of them that should believe after because of the evident grace and long suffering that God sent towards me. That even in spite of the fact that I fought men, witnessed the deaths of many, perhaps even killed, perhaps destroyed this and that, still the eye of God was there to set this man apart for the work of the gospel. Paul is proof that there is nobody God cannot use. He's the pattern that tells you that it doesn't matter how bad a man can be, God can change that man around and use them to the glory of his name and expansion of his kingdom. Now, in 1 Corinthians, he says, I thank God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything, he says, ye are enriched by him, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and the Bible says God is faithful who by whom you were called and to the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ that's the faithfulness of God the faithfulness of God is to the end that he will confirm you unto the end that you might be blameless on the day of our Lord if you're a believer you should never live any day worried that you're not going to heaven don't ever think about it don't ever imagine it you should never worry as a believer that you end badly. When we're talking about the faithfulness of God toward you, he's equipping you in all utterance, that you come short in no gift, that the grace of God operating on your life fulfills everything God has ordained you to do, but that as he's doing that, the Bible says he wants to confirm you unto the end. He wants to do all of these wonderful things in your life, but while he's doing those things, he wants to confirm you unto the end. But he's saying, I'm going to walk through you. Deal with everything that comes your way. Your weaknesses will not live long. I'll deal with them in your body. I'll deal with the issues of your soul. I'll deal with the weaknesses of your mind. I'll deal with the weaknesses of your flesh. And as long as you're progressively walking in the truth, you will start to see your life changing and changing and changing. Yes, people might judge you, but I am your confirmer. At every step of the way, he will say, you are my righteousness, you are my glory, you are my child, I love you, I am for you, I will never be against you, I am working through you and for you, both to will 
and to do according to my good pleasure. I began this good work in you. I'll see to accomplishment to my day. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I am the beginning and I am the end. Yes, I know you might be in a situation where you even don't understand yourself. But don't worry. I am looking to the confirming of you toward the end. That on that day, you'll stand before me. And I will say, you are blameless. Why? Because I, God, am faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. He says, there has no temptation that has befallen you, but such that is common to man. But the Bible says, but God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able? It means that whatever attacks you, you're stronger than. He says he will not tempt you beyond that which you are able. But the Bible says he will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. That means whatever comes your way, you can handle now, how can you fail when whatever is attacking you, you have already defeated it by Christ? How can you fail? You can't fail! In Romans chapter 5, verses 8, the message by the Bible says, God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were of no use whatsoever to him. Now that we are right with God by means of his sacrificial death, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. It is not there. There is no question anymore of is God mad at me? It's not, it can't happen. This is the power of the gospel. God is no longer against you. And the next verse says, if when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God by the sacrificial death of his son, now that we are at our best, the Bible says, just think how our lives will expand and deepen by the means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plodding prose. He says, we sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. That is why when you're praising God, don't just sing. I'm so glad that Jesus set me free. No, 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 no. Hallelujah! There was a minute we used to sing and say, I'm on my way to heaven. Hey! <laughs> Salvation is wonderful. This sermon is now available on DVD and CD at Fenero Sales Table and Andrew Womack Bookshop.